I really want to do either problem 10 or 11. Um, because this is on, you know, it's an example you have seen, you know, ballistic pendulum. But my experience with trying to teach these setups, like problems 9, 10, and 11, is that people kind of need to see it a few times before they get it. So um, let me do it with the problem 10. I think problem 10 is the uh, one that illustrates the important issues here best. So out of worksheet 8, will do problem 10 and 12. Those two will uh, demonstrate some of the things that you have to watch out for as you look at problems like this. Good. Questions, comments? All right. So let's uh, get started. Um, so I don't have any more simulations, so I won't be wasting any time with the simulations. I mean, I call it waste, but um, it, it is really important that you spend the time and effort to build up these correct mental images of what happens. Um, so, OK, worksheet 8, problem 10. Uh, let me describe the situation, and I want you to visualize as I describe it what's going to happen. So it's someone you know, swinging down from that thing. So this is how I like to draw it. Um, Tarzan is swinging down from some height H. And is it Jack who's down there? Yeah. OK, there's, a, there's Jack here who's down at height equals 0. He's about to get eaten, probably by a gorilla. And Tarzan is swinging down from some rope that's attached up here. So he's going to uh, gently push off. So he still start out with the initial velocity um, zero and gently swing down from this height. At some point, come to this position. Um, wait. Tarzan. At some point, come to this position. Um, how do I draw this? Uh, uh, well, I'm, you guys understand I'm not hanging Tarzan, right? OK, at some point, come to this position, grab Jack, and they are both going to swing up together. Um, they are, so Tarzan will grab Jack, and they are both going to swing up together, and they will reach some other height here, H. Um, and eventually, both the Jack and Tarzan will end up at this height. And you have a mental image of what's happening. Tarzan swings down, grabs Jack, and then swings up here. OK, with that image in mind, this is, you know, these are the questions that you need to go through. Um, so you know, what kind of strategy would you use to solve this question? You really know three strategies, you know, conservation, uh, standard strategy, conservation of energy, and conservation of momentum. And um, as uh, I will point out later in the lab section today, a lot of this is it's trial and error. So you have to guess something first, and you do a few checks to see, OK, is this correct or not? If it's not, then you have to move on to the next guess. So it's, it's going to be a trial and error. So out of those three strategies, which one would you guess is going to be your first to try? Mm -hmm. OK, I hear momentum and energy. Um, if you think about this situation carefully, you will see that you have some issues with the momentum. As in, what is the initial momentum here? Zero. Zero. And the reason some, of, some people might be thinking momentum is that when you look at the final momentum, it's also zero. But that actually doesn't help you solve, get to the height. Furthermore, at this position here, in this snapshot, Tarzan is actually moving with some speed, right? So from here to here, momentum is changing. So, so at least uh, in the sense of, can I use conservation of momentum for the entire problem? The answer is no. All right. Um, when you look at conservation of energy, let me ask you this question. Do you think you can use conservation of energy from beginning to the end? Now, a lot of people think you can. Uh, and let me just write down what the answer would be if you did that. Let me just give you the answer for that, and we are going to compare that answer with the actually correct answer. So the re that's the reason I want you to do this question, so that you can see the mistake that I've seen like half the class make when I give a problem like this on the exam. Um, so you know, let's say your guess was energy is conserved. So you say conservation of energy 
So you write down all the things that I tell you to write down, you know. So this you label as a snapshot. I'm using zero here, so let me say snapshot zero. And this I'm using f here, so let me call this a snapshot f or final. Um, so you might say, all right, my total energy at point zero is equal to total energy at final. And you might say, um, potential, I mean, kinetic energy is zero, so all I have is a potential energy. Mass of tarjan, GH, is equal to final, kinetic energy is also zero, so all you have is potential energy of double, you know, not double, a mass of tarjan and jack. They probably don't have the same mass. So mass of tarjan plus mass of jack times G, small light H, and you might go this far. H, small h, is equal to mass of tarjan over mass of tarjan plus mass of jack. Uh, G is cancelled out times h. Like you might get this far, right? And throughout this entire process, unless you slowed down, stopped for a bit, and asked yourself this question, can I confirm that energy is conserved? Throughout this whole entire process, you wouldn't have realized that you actually made a mistake. That you wouldn't have realized that the height, it's not going to be this. It's going to be some other value. So th th this is why I call this problem solving a trial and error approach. Um, in fact, all problem solving approaches are trial and error. You make a guess, that's your trial. But what's actually more important is the error portion. Um, how to recognize when, when you made a mistake. And here, um, I guess in your worksheet, this is what I call hard error. Um, this is on worksheet nine, as in you made a real mistake that you just never realized. And this is the question you have to ask. This is where you have to visualize the process from the beginning through this step to the end. And you have to ask the question, is everything here consistent with energy conservation? So from here, swing down, I can say, all right, energy is conserved. It's like pendulum, energy is conserved. And this swing up here, you would all say, well, that's still like a pendulum, energy is conserved. So the picture that I'm really putting under the microscope is this snapshot here. Let me call it snapshot one. I haven't used that yet. What happens in this snapshot one that I would worry energy might not be conserved? Collision, collision okay. Uh, what type of collision do you recognize this as? So that even though the problem doesn't say it's inelastic, you recognize that it's been somehow inelastic. Seven, you're answering, right? Uh, do, yeah, like what can you point to in the aspect of this collision and say, oh, because of that, energy is not going to be conserved. Jack has to stick with Tarzan, otherwise they won't both go uh, Yeah, Jack sticks to Tarzan, right? So that's the type of collision that you saw before, where um, I have these two cards and where they stick together. And we worked out the math before that when two things stick together, if you're conserving momentum, there's no way to conserve kinetic energy. So, so whenever two things stick together, that's when you have to recognize, oh, that's a completely inelastic collision. Therefore, here, energy is not going to be conserved. So that's, a, that's where you have to slow down and you know, be introspective and realize that energy is not conserved here. And once you realize this, then you realize this very initial setup was not right. So the rest of what I wrote down is not going to be right. You have to step back and realizing all of what we just went through, um, ask yourself, you know, okay, how am, how am I going to approach this? If I try to go from beginning to the end, momentum is not conserved or, you know, well, momentum is not conserved, there are some parts. And energy is also not conserved from beginning to the end. Here is where energy is not conserved. And once you introduce a point where it's not conserved, then you can no longer say energy doesn't change from here to here. So what do we do? So this is a kind of a, like a mixed, uh, um, mixed strategy question. As in, you are not going to be able, uh, able to use a single conservation law from beginning to the end, but maybe you can break this up into enough parts. 
that for each of the parts, you can use a particular conservation law. Let's go through step by step. So this is where visualization helps. So let's say Tarzan is starting out from here. He starts to swing down. Is momentum conserved or not? Not, right? Zero momentum. As he's swinging down, he gains momentum. That's because of this external force of tension and gravity. Right? So all right, as he swings down, momentum is not conserved. But is there something that's conserved? Energy is conserved. So I'm imagining as the Tarzan swings down, I'm going to use conservation of energy. And I'm going to stop at a point where I can no longer use conservation of energy. Where do I stop? Around here, right? This is swing down to this position where Tarzan at this speed, I can say energy is conserved. Energy conserved. All right. Um, so at this point, the collision is where I can say energy is conserved. Is there something that is conserved here? Momentum is conserved. In fact, the fact that we are describing as collision is kind of a give a dead giveaway. Because I said earlier, you know, in collisions, you can almost always assume momentum is conserved. So energy is not conserved, but we can say momentum is conserved. Which means hopefully this will be enough information to get us through this step of collision. And let's say they've collided, now it's Tarzan and Jack stuck together. So um, in the rest of this process here, is some, so momentum is no longer conserved, it's swinging up, they're losing speed, they're losing momentum. What is conserved as they swing up? Yeah, energy is conserved again as they um, swing up. So that's the outline of how we are going to approach this problem. We are going to break it up into three parts and walk through each part using the quantity that we carefully identified as being conserved. So this is my step number one, step number two, and step number three. And I have to go through, walk through this carefully. So let's do that. Um, so let me. In the swing down? You can kind of see it just with the numbers. So as you're visualizing it, he starts out with the zero velocity, right? So here, uh, initial momentum is zero. As is here, is he, does he have zero velocity? Right, he has non-zero velocity, right? Tarzan's momentum before collision is in fact going to be uh, his mass times his speed. So it's clearly changing from zero to non-zero value. That's right, it's not conserved. I mean, so that's enough to um, you know, proceed the question, with the question without using conservation of momentum. Because we're starting at rest. Yeah, yeah, like you can see the momentum changing. Right. And now if you are trying to answer for yourself why is this happening, it's because of external forces. External force of tension, there's tension force pulling on Tarzan, and external force of gravity. Yeah, those act together to change the momentum. But here, what's important is that you recognize that momentum has changed. OK, so let me sketch this out. In step number one, we are going to use energy conservation. And step number two, I'm going to use momentum conservation. So this is the important modification to what we were doing before. And finally, hopefully, I'm reserving enough space. Step number three, I'm going to use energy conservation again. And chaining these steps together, hopefully, will give me enough relationships to be able to solve for these intermediate unknowns and eventually get to this final height. Or the question might be asking in a different way, but I'm just going to assume that this is given, and this is what we want to know. The question might have it the other way around. But Everyone okay with this outline? Just so don't get confused, that uh, one with the from before. You want me to, uh, okay, yeah, yeah, let's uh, relabel it. So, do I want, no, 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 I think it's gonna be fine. Okay, that was just the first snapshot, right? Yeah, so the way it is, uh, these are snapshots, these are the processes. Let me write it out and see if it's confusing. Let me do process one first. For process one, my, I have in, so this is my starting point. My initial energy, it will be zero kinetic energy and some potential energy. 
I'm starting out with that. Some zero kinetic energy plus some initial potential energy. Mass of tarjan, GH. Right? For process one, I'm saying that all of this goes into zero potential energy. And this is speed that tarjan has at this moment before the collision. So, Yeah, so it will be, so this time, so this was the kinetic potential. Kinetic will now be one half mass of tarjan times its speed squared plus zero, kin, um, zero potential energy. Good? All right, so in this equation, this is an unknown that we can solve for. For the second process of the collision itself, um, oh, I need to label one more quantity. So I have the speed of the tarjan before the collision, but I don't have any speed after they collide. So I guess I need to describe that. Uh, let me use a symbol that we haven't used yet. I use VF here, so I can't use that. Um, I think I can use V1. Not too confusing? That's the speed of their combined as their combined speed. Good. So I'm going to use this symbol to describe momentum conservation. So momentum before the collision is the mass of the tarjan times his speed, Vt. Uh, that's the initial momentum before the collision. Momentum after collision is the total mass, tarjan plus jack. So mass of the tarjan plus mass of jack moving together at speed one. And when you look at it, um, hopefully you realize the only additional unknown here is V1. So, you know, additional equation, additional unknown, we are probably in a good place to be able to actually work this out. Uh, final step number three, I have some kinetic energy here it, that's going to go all into potential energy. So it's sort of the mirror image of this one. For step number three, I say, all right, I have all kinetic energy, one half mass of the tarjan plus mass of jack, their speed squared, all kinetic energy, plus zero potential energy, if I want to say it out loud. That's going to be equal to zero kinetic energy plus their final potential energy up at this position. Um, Mt plus Mgjgh. And when you look at it, some aspects of what we were doing before is in this correct approach. As in, we had initial energy here, initial energy here. And we have an expression for the final energy here, which is here. But what we have done carefully here is that we did not say this is equal to that. We separated out this step, the energy non-conserving step, and we worked this out separately. But, okay, let me do the algebra. The algebra is actually pretty simple. Um, so the, some of the masses cancel out. Uh, masses here cancel out. And masses here actually cancel out. So, you know, I don't want to deal with unnecessary masses. Um, so I guess what I would do is I would solve this for V1 and plug, plug it in here. Um, and I'm going to have to solve this for Vt and then plug it in here, right? So let me actually, actually pre-do that intermediate step. Solve this for Vt. Vt is equal to uh, this thing times V1. And I'm going to solve for V1 from here and put it in there. So V1 here, solving it for it here. V1 is equal to square root of, multiply by 2, 2GH, two square root it. So square root of 2GH. Yeah. Plug this in here, I end up with and this whole thing is mt plus mj over mt times this, square root of 2gh. Plug this in vt into here, then I'm going to have an equation in terms of everything that's known and h that we are trying to solve for. So when I do that, I get gh is equal to 1 half vt squared. So this thing squared, which means this, mt plus mj over mt 
squared times 2gh. And some of the things do cancel out again, which is nice. 2 cancels out. g cancels out. And I guess that's it. I can solve the rest for h. When I solve for h, I get small h is equal to um, reciprocal of this squared times big H. So mt over mt plus mj squared times the big H. This is the actual correct answer, where you have gone through all the ca steps carefully and handled the energy non-conserving step. And when you compare this answer with our previous wrong answer, is this a smaller value or bigger value? I don't have a lot of time, so let me give you this hint. Um, if you imagine that Jack and Tarzan have the same mass, what is this ratio? One half. One half, right? OK. You see the same ratio here, except you are squaring it. What's one half squared? One quarter, one quarter right? Mm -hmm. One quarter is smaller than one half. So when you handle the energy non-conservation here correctly, the final height does end up smaller, because, which is consistent with energy not being conserved. So your pre previous calculation here, it overestimates, because you did, with, if you don't handle correctly that energy is not conserved, then you overestimate what the height will end up being. When you correctly do it, then you get the correct height, which is actually less. Yeah. All right, so that's, uh, you know, um, so this is an example of where you do have to carefully visualize and imagine through the whole problem to make sure you don't miss this step. So this is, I can emphasize this enough, uh, that, I mean, other than that I have time limit, um, that the biggest mistake people make when using conservation law is to usually not math mistake, because math turns out to be pretty simple. The mistake usually is, it's some conceptual mistake. You miss the step where something is not conserved, and you mistakenly said it was conserved. 